Welcome to another edition of Yes, We're Here. And I have a, a different partner today. It's Ian Joy, who does our NYCFC games on the Yes Network. And Ian, this must be an absolute joy for you that you don't have to work with Bob Lorenz, who you've done this with for the last three times. It is a joy. Any opportunity I get to be able to share a broadcast with you, Michael, as you know, having been a guest on your show already, that was uh, one of the joys of my own life. I do love ah. Bob, and I do miss Bob every time I go to sleep at night, I'm thinking about Bob. So to wake up this morning, get a message from you, that was pretty nice. Really? So you go to bed sleeping, thinking Bob. That is really stunning. That's breaking. He's the hero of mine, Michael. What can I say? You have three kids. How's this going with the with the staying at home? Are you homeschooling? Yeah, it is. Yeah, you know yourself, Michael. It's not easy with the kids trying to get them into somewhat of a routine and keep them in a routine. Beforehand, the first five or six days, they thought it was vacation. Dad's home. <laughs> We're enjoying ourselves. We're eating what we want. There's some takeout food involved, and it feels like Christmas, right? But uh, the last, I think, what, 10 days now, we've started to get into a routine. We're doing, obviously, some homeschooling with them. They're working out. They're doing some exercises with us. So I'm keeping them going. I'm keeping that brain stimulated. I think it's very important to be able to do that for the children, to give them somewhat of a reality check that this is not a vacation. This is serious. Um, but at the same time, dad's home, and how often do we get to say that as sports broadcasters? We're always traveling or we're in a studio. So it's actually quite nice. It's a bit of a blessing in disguise to spend that quality time with the kids. How about you? Are you enjoying the time with the kids? I, I really am. You know, a lot of this is going to sound weird, but, you know, a lot of people are complaining about having to stay home. And I, I don't want it to be corny, but, you know, the people that are in this house are the people that I love and I want to spend the most time with. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd like to go to a, a dinner with my wife or a movie, but the fact that I'm stuck at home with people that I love, my wife and the kids, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world. And, you yeah. know, we act, you know, we're lucky enough that we live in a house, so there's some room to get around. I do yeah. feel for people that are in apartments, that must not be easy. Yeah, I was saying that to my wife as well. We're, we're very fortunate because we have a nice space. We have a nice yard where the kids can go out and spend some time. And they haven't been out into a restaurant for a while or they haven't been even in the car for a while, Michael. They've just been stuck in the house, but they're handling it really well. But for us, we're so used to being on the road and doing our thing broadcasting, being at events, being at games. I was thinking about you yesterday because of being open in day. I just wonder how that was for you because that must have been a strange feeling not being ready to go on opening day. There's no baseball. I think I've, I've done okay with this. I've had my, my bouts of anxiety and, you know, been down a little bit. But yesterday, I was really blue. It really hit me because, you know, I was supposed to be in the booth at Camden Yards for the Yankees and the Orioles. And I haven't even told anybody this, but, you know, just to have a sense of normalcy, all the people that were going to be on the crew, our producer, Bill Bolin, all the guys in the truck and the gals in the truck and everybody that was going to do the game, Bill Bolin sent out a rundown as if we were going to do the game exactly when we would have received it. So just to, wow. it, it was a good thing, but it was also a little bit of, you know, a little bit of a depressing thing because that was where we were supposed to be. But uh, again, you know, if you're healthy at this point and you're staying away from the virus, I guess you have to consider yourself lucky and fortunate and uh, just cross your fingers and the work will return someday when we get through this. Yeah, and I look forward to that when it does happen. But you touch on a great point now, Michael. I think that's so important for people to recognize, you know, we, we do also live a human life. We do also have a human brain and there is some difficulties that come with not being able to do our job. And a lot of people don't recognize it. It's, we don't do the job for fame and for money. We do it because it's a passion and it's what you're, you're born to do. So when someone says to you, hey, you can't do this, it's very difficult mentally to be able to, to deal with that. And I worry about a lot of people. And I know New York is especially one of the biggest areas that's been hit right now. Um, you know, mentally how people are dealing with that, not being able to live their regular lives, not being able to work out properly like they're used to or go to their job. Difficult times, but I hope everybody is, um, is looking after their loved ones, making smart choices. And, and I know you are too with your family as well. So keep your head up. Baseball will be back very soon. And I'll, I'll tell you what, the, the group of people that I've a lot of my life are athletes. And athletes are so driven by, by a schedule. This is what we do on this time. This is what we do at that time. And I haven't had an opportunity to talk to any of them except for Aaron Boone yesterday. And you could see that the absence of that game yesterday just ripped something away from you. I'm sure that 
You've yeah. gone through it, and the NYC FC players are going through it. Yeah, the MLS players are really struggling right now because they went through preseason. When you go through preseason as a soccer player, you're going through six, eight weeks of hardcore training. I mean, it is very, very difficult. You're training like an athlete preparing for the Olympic. They did two months of that, and then they came back. They started their games. They played two regular season games before then the season was suspended, and now all of a sudden, they don't know when they're going to start that season back up again, so it's almost as if they're going to have to go through somewhat of a small preseason again or maybe a repeat of preseason before they get going so I think it's very difficult for all athletes right now they, they're used to being able to have an, an alarm clock wake them up in the morning getting ready for practice getting ready for a game nutrition is also a big thing for that what you're eating and when you don't have a schedule you fall into sometimes some bad habits and that's what happens around the holidays when you're eating and drinking what you want to do so I, I do worry about athletes all around and especially the soccer players in, in MLS right now they're uh, they're a little lost you know it's it's um, one of the most frequently asked questions on my radio show Ian is that you know how long will the players need to ramp back up because like like the soccer players they had most of spring training they were about two weeks away from starting they didn't start like they did uh, in the MLS. And I would say that if they rush it, like let, let's say best case scenario is two months and they really rush it, yep. three weeks I think would be a minimum. How about in soccer? Would that be a minimum or could they do it faster than that? No, they could do it faster than that right now if they started in, in April, which I think is unlikely. It's definitely going to go into May now. So it depends when they get clearance for, for practice. If they can practice two, three weeks right now would be good in April. Um, that would be enough for them because they've done – the hardcore training. They're already at a peak level. So they're not going to lose too much fitness unless they're sitting around for six to eight weeks. Then they would have to do a complete restructure of practice and training. And of course, you do have to worry about injury as well. I mean, I guess it works differently for different sports in baseball. And if you look at the Yankees, of course, there was a lot of knocked up players, right, who are banged up with injuries. And it gives them some time to actually maybe recuperate a little bit more and, and maybe not miss as much of the season that they were going to miss. Same thing in soccer. There's players who were out injured who now have a chance of not missing so many games. But I think the most important thing for these players is that they just – they miss the camaraderie. They miss being with each other. They miss the practice field. They miss being in the locker room. I mean, I'm the same. I miss being in the booth with, like you just mentioned, the producer, the director, camera, engineers, sound engineers. Those people are family. That, that's what we're missing right now. But it gives me great hope that we'll be back very soon. I'm so excited for it. And now just doing these things and getting an opportunity to speak to you with, with Bob doing our thing and the other guys at, at the Yes Network as well, which is something I might not have had a chance to do otherwise. You know, I'm going to grab these opportunities to share moments and, and chat with people like yourself and, and learn a little bit and gain some experience. So these are little blessings that I'm taking. We've always had such a good time the time that you were on the radio show and today we're having a good time. And there's a good rapport between the two of us. So I'm wondering, is there any way – and you love baseball, right? Yes, yeah, actually. So is there any way we could have a Paul O'Neill enjoy trade where Paul does the soccer for one game and you oh. come in and do the Yankee game? What, what about that? We could talk to Flip about that. Dude, that would be so much fun. I would love it. I know I still have a lot to learn, and I've only really been following baseball since about 2011 and 12. And certainly the history is something that's lacking from me, where, of course, yourself and everybody else who, who you know were born to love baseball, for me it was soccer. But the passion, I mean, it's a great feeling being at a game. I, I love going to games live, in person, at the stadium. I was there for opening day last year uh, at Yankee Stadium. And for me, that was a great feeling with the, with the Yes Network as well. So I'm open to it, Michael. It would be an absolute honor. I'm glad you brought it up. I'd love to see how O'Neill would do with soccer. Anyway, uh, are you washing your hands? Because uh, as I keep saying every day, I wash my hands more in the last month than I probably have in my entire life. So. Everybody has to wash their hands and obviously listen to what all the scientists are saying and stay yeah. home, right? Yeah, stay at home. Uh, make sure you're taking all precaution necessary. Stay away. I think that's the most important thing. The grocery store in particular right now, you know, only my wife or myself are going. The kids are staying at home. We're making sure we make the right decisions for ourselves and for our loved ones. Um, I'm sending out a lot of love to everyone in New York as well because I know they're going through some tough times. And I know you're available always on social media, my social media, at Joy Paulian. Anyone can hit me up. I'm very communicative. So anytime, I'm always there if anybody needs me. Now, I, I'm flattered that a lot of people told me that you like my home run call. See ya. So you want 
you want to end this yes at home yes we're home with with the sea i'm going to let you end it uh, i would love it yes we are always here for you and yes we are going home right now see ya